I draw a graph, and on one axis here I have this temperature, the idea of temperature with two reference points, zero for the freezing point of water, 100 degrees for the uh, boiling point of water, and I've got on the uh, y-axis I've got the property f of t it has some value corresponding to t equals zero. So let's get some value right here. There's another value connected to this property here when t is equal to 100, our reference point here. Now there are many ways I can connect these two points together. The simplest way is to draw a straight line. It's called the linear interpolation. My line is not so straight right here. You, know, just you could do a different kind of line. You could do a quadratic, let's say, you know, something like this. That would be a perfectly fine interpolation. Right, we choose to have a linear interpolation. That's a, ch that's a choice. And that choice turns out to be very interesting and really important because if you connect these two points together, you get a straight line that has to intercept the x-axis at some point. Now, what does it mean to intercept the x-axis here? It means that the value of f of t for this temperature is zero, right? That means that at this point right here, f of t is equal to zero. That means the pressure times the volume equals zero for that gas. And if you're below this temperature here, this quantity, p times v, would be negative. Is that possible? Can we have PV negative? Yes? No, it can't be that. Negative pressure doesn't make any sense, right? Negative volume doesn't make any sense. That means that this part here can't happen. That means that this temperature right here is the absolute lowest temperature you can go to that physically makes any sense. That's the absolute zero. And so the concept of an absolute zero, a temperature below wheat, which you just can't go, that's directly out of this scheme here, this linear interpolation scheme with these two reference points. If I had taken as my interpolation scheme my white curve here, you know, I, I could go to infinity and have the equivalent of absolute B zero being at infinity, at minus infinity. Right. So this temperature, this absolute zero here, which is absolute zero on the Kelvin scale, the lowest possible temperature in the Celsius scale is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And so that begs the notion of re-referencing our, our reference point, of changing our refer reference points. To change our reference point from this point here being zero instead of this point here being zero. And so redefining then the temperature scale to the Kelvin scale <coughs> where T in degrees Kelvin is equal to T in degrees Celsius plus 273. 0.15, okay, and then you get the, the, the Calvin scale. Okay. All right, it turned out that this thermometer here wasn't quite perfect either. Just like Fahrenheit measuring 96 degrees being a warm-blooded, healthy man, right, that's not very accurate. Our temperature probably fluctuates during the day a little bit anyways, right? It's not very, not very accurate. And similarly, the boiling point of a, uh, defining that at 100 degrees Celsius, well, that depends on the pressure. Depends whether you're in Denver or, in, or you're in Boston. Right? Boil, water boils at different temperatures depending on where you, what the atmospheric pressure is. Same thing for the freezing point. So that means that you've got to define the pressure pretty well. You've got to know what the pressure is. It would be much better if we had a uh, reference point that didn't care where the pressure was. Just like our substance doesn't care where the gas is. 
It's kind of universal, right? 